the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Are the horns still down? Or are the horns up? Looks like the horns are up right now. Looks like with the return of Queen Ewers, along with the support of B. John Robinson, it looks like they still got a little something to say about this 2022 season. As in, are the horns down or are the horns up? Let's talk about it. OCF, that's the Outlaw of College Football. That's me, JPC. That stands for Jesse Paul Clark on Facebook, spelled J-E-S-S-E, without the I. That's right. I'm also on Twitter at OCF Productions. And today I'm doing this video at the behest of one of our greatest and loyalist listeners, Lee Barton, who is a Horn fan himself. And uh, he made a good point. It's time to talk about Texas and are they turning the corner on the Sarkeesian. In last week's big victory over Oklahoma, while this is not one of Oklahoma's most um, talented and best teams in the world, the fact is that last year Texas found a way to either make these games close that shouldn't be close or even, even lose these games. Because as you know, last year I think Texas was up on Oklahoma last year. 28 to 3. So excuse the Horn fans if they're not quite sold on Texas being back because they blew such a big lead to Oklahoma last year. There's probably still some thoughts creeping around their mind. But this Oklahoma team has been gutted by Lincoln Riley, as I've talked about ad nauseum. Uh, about 40 players left the team. They didn't all go with Lincoln Riley, but because he left, it's probably why they left. But we won't talk about that. That's another topic for another day. But the thing is, Texas came out in the second half and took care of business. Just do what you're supposed to do. That's all you can do in the college football season. With so many turns and so many swings of momentum, as they call it, throughout the college football season, Texas did exactly what they needed to do in the second half. Quinn Ewers passed for 289 yards, four touchdowns, and had one pick. Uh, B. John Robinson had 22 carries for 130 yards. It's a 5.9 yard average. So, has Texas turned the corner? I think they could have. And I'm not trying to be like the Texas fans or the Colt McCoy version that tried to say that, you know, Alabama would not have won that national championship had Colt, play, Colt McCoy played the whole game. But I am saying that if Quinn Ewers had played that whole game against Alabama, that things might have likely turned out a lot different. Now, it does sound a lot like the Colt McCoy fans, but Colt McCoy didn't get to come back and prove otherwise. Quinn Ewers, he's got a second lease. He's got a second lease on, on life here. And, yes, they lost to Texas Tech on the road. I think it was 37-34. You really couldn't blame that on the offense since they put up 34 points. But, nevertheless, Quinn Ewers, to me, is a polarizing figure for this team. He sort of got that polarizing effect on his teammates. I wouldn't really call it Tim Tebow-ish, but sort of in that range. And when Quinn Ewers is in the game, it makes the whole team, I think, as a whole, play more confident, even the defense. Even the coaching staff seems to be able to be a little more confident in what they're doing when Quinn Ewers is playing for the Texas Longhorns. And going forward, Texas now has to prove that they can handle a little success, which they've not, not been able to prove here in the last, I'd say, five to ten years. they got Iowa State next. Iowa State is one of those teams that's like a little boogaboo, man. Every once in a while, they'll just jump up, pop, and bite you, 
in beach. Been a lot better team under Matt Campbell. Um, so I'm going to be real interested to see how Texas follows up that big victory over Oklahoma. Because we all know Oklahoma's in disarray right now. So they beat West Virginia, middle end of the road team. They beat Oklahoma, who's in disarray. Now they're going to play an Iowa State team that's always also sort of middling. But I think Iowa State is a little bit better as far as the middling team goes, of those middling teams. <laughs> so it's just going to be interesting to see how they approach this Iowa State game and how they come out and play, where they can keep that consistency and that concentration going forward. And the big one, to me, is going to be two weeks from now, if they can beat Iowa State, if they can play and beat Oklahoma State, who's been a real big booger for Texas as well. If they win those two games, I'm I'm safe in saying that Texas is probably the best two-loss team out there. And with the way the college football season is going, and if the NCAA, or not the NCAA, excuse me, if the playoff committee holds true to what they say, then they'll judge a team by their complete cover and their complete work. Uh, they say they take injuries into account, so they could take the Quinn Ewers injury into account and the fact that Texas maybe lost a couple of games that maybe they shouldn't have lost and put them in the playoffs over a team with one loss at that point, especially if Texas runs the table and wins the big 12, or whatever they call it there. <coughs> and teams going back and forth in conferences, man, I don't know. Sooner or later, they're going to have to change some of these names, right? But I think going forward, that this could be the turning point for Texas. We can go back and point to this game maybe five years down the road. That's where Texas made the turn, especially for Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian is that coach that, you know, he went through the Saban car wash just like Lane Kiffin, and now he's somewhat succeeding. And like I've said, ad nauseum in a lot of videos, these first-year coaches always, if they're a great coach, they seem like they always have a first subpar year. And – I think Sarkeesian's coming around. I think that Texas could be heading in the right direction. They can run the table the rest of the way. They could be the first two-loss team ever to make the playoffs. And that's all i got to say about that. If you don't mind, there's a little hard option. Click that underneath here. Throw a few dollars in the coffers because here lately, um, YouTube's been real strict on ads and whatnot. So, yeah, that'll help me out a lot. And as always, KMCA, to all the other teams, class is now officially dismissed.